Hey, I'm Jordan, and this is Top Shelf. The MLB regular season is right around the corner, and I'm feeling fired up. Today, I'm sharing my opening day lineup for the Toronto Blue Jays. It's been a long spring already, and we've seen nice performances from Kevin Pillar, T. Oscar Hernandez, and Curtis Granderson, and some potential concern in Kendrys Morales and Justin Smoke. Nonetheless, let's see what we're looking at. On opening day, I expect Curtis Granderson to be in the leadoff spot. He looks comfortable with his new team, and moving into the Rogers Center should resurrect some of that power in his bat. Second spot obviously goes to Josh Donaldson. He should knock 30 home, r home runs out of the park this year. Only concern is that calf of his. Justin Smoke's in the third spot for the time being. I think a lot uh, is going to depend on Devin Travis's performances in the early month. Smoke, nonetheless, should be around 30 home runs this year, but I'm expecting a big drop in his batting average this year. He hit 270 last year. I expect him to be back around his career average at 232. Morales is batting clean up. I personally wish we never brought this guy in. I'd be okay with Steve Pierce at first, or even Rowdy Tellez, until uh, Vlad Guerrero is ready for the majors, who I'm guessing would move from third base to first base. Either way, Morales is good for 20 or 25 home runs this year. Russell Martin, bunch of question marks by this dude. I've got all sorts of reservations about him, if he can stay healthy, if he can even hit. But Luke Miley, this backup catcher of ours, I'm excited to see what he can do with further opportunity. Batting sixth, I got Devin Travis. I Charles penciling him in. He could hit first or second, but I think the way the team is made up, it makes sense to put him in the bottom of the lineup where I think the Jays will need lots of production from if they're going to compete this year. Seventh in the order, T. Oscar Hernandez. This guy came over in a trade with Houston last year. He showed a lot of upside, and he's going to get a chance to play this year. He's off to a good start in spring, batting 333, and he's hit three home runs as well. Aldemise Diaz is another guy, and he's going to be filling in for Troy Tulowitzki until who knows when that will be. But last season, Diaz hit 259 over 286 plate, plate appearances with the St. Louis Cardinals. year before that, however, he came in fifth in the NL Rookie of the Year race and made the All-Star team. So hopefully he can fill in for Tula well, which I don't think will be that difficult considering the way Tulowitzki's performed for the Jays since arriving. Uh, Kevin Plar, this is our number nine batter, and I believe this to be because He's going to be turning the lineup over quite nicely. He's been on a toward pace this spring, and although I do believe the Jays would like to see him in the leadoff spot, Curtis Granderson's there. He's looked really good. So hopefully Pilar keeps up this toward pace that he's on and can bring it into the regular season. If we go and we look at the bench, I really like it this year, especially with Steve Pierce on it, which says a lot because he'll actually not be in our outfield every day, which is very good, Jays fans. Very, very good. Aside from him, Luke Miley, like I mentioned, he's the backup catcher. We brought in Randall Gritchuk in a trade with St. Louis this winter. And then there's the ever-versatile again, Garvis Salart. Only concern there is he hasn't hit anything this year. Luckily for him, he can play any position on the field. Gritchuk, however, though, this is the guy we got to keep our eye on. There's lots of potential here. And just ask a guy like Jose Bautista what a move to the Rogers Center can do for your career. Moving into the pitching side of things, I think this is a bigger strength for the Jays than they get credit for. They have a good mix of young and old guys, lefty righties in their rotation, and the bullpen has been a bright spot for them this spring. So let's check out the starters here. Jay Hap's getting in the getting the ball opening day. You get what you get with this guy. You're gonna get consistency and innings pitched. Aaron Sanchez I got as my number two starter. Fingers crossed for this guy. I think he can be the Jays' most dominating pitcher, and I'm sure many would agree with that. However, the question is, can he stay healthy and get back to that Cy Young type form that we saw a couple of years ago? Mark Estrada, he seems to have found his grip on his changeup this spring. He's only pitched eight innings thus far, but so far so good. Marcus Stroman, it was announced today that he will pitch the, the Jays' fourth game this year. This is my guy, and I expect him to uh, have a really big season and become a bona fide ace. Jamie Garcia... I got him in my fifth spot. He's been competing with Joe Biagini for that for the fifth spot on that rotation. However, I think that Shapiro and Atkins brought Garcia in not to be in the bullpen, but to be that fifth starter. Biagini's been in the bullpen. He has experience going from the bullpen to the rotation and back. So 
It makes sense to have Jamie Garcia there. He's also had a really good spring, so I think he's going to prove to be a, a good under-the-radar uh, signing for the Jays. If you go to the bullpen, this is single-handedly the most important area of the team. The Jays' bullpen either A, cannot stay healthy, or B, underperforms. We can expect a long season. However, there is some potential. Think Deck McGuire. Do you remember this guy? The Jays drafted him back in the first round in 2010 as a starter. That didn't work, but... He's back, and he may have found his niche in the bullpen. This spring, he hasn't given up a single run. Tim Miza, this is another guy I'm excited for and could prove to be a reliable lefty out of the pen. He's had a good spring. He's had a taste of the major leagues last year. Uh, I expect him to be able to sustain himself in that position this year. Aaron Loop, the other lefty on this team. It is what it is. He's going to be on this team, and he's going to be able to get lefties out. Joe Biagini. Biagini is going to be the long man, and he's going to provide the versatility, like mentioned. He's going to be able to start when needed, and I would expect him to be a foundational piece for the bullpen. Then we can add some Canadian fla flavor this year in John Axford. I think he's going to break camp with them this year, but he's going to be on a short lease, especially with guys like Danny Barnes and Tyler Clippard, who also deserve a look. In the setup role, Ryan Tapera, he's going to be there. He was in that spot last year. He should have another good year. And lastly, Roberto Osuna, or Osuna Matata, our closer and most important piece of the bullpen. If Roberto Osuna regresses this year, the Jays are in some serious trouble. He blew a ton of saves last year, and this spring his walks and hits per inning pitched has kind of concerned me. It's sitting at one. He got lit up today uh, a little bit, gave up a run. So, I don't know, hopefully he can be okay. He worried me a little bit last year, though. On the outside, looking in. I'm sure many Jays fans would love to see a guy like Guerrero Jr. or Bo Bichette in the opening day lineup. That's just not going to happen though, Jays fans. Instead, they're going to go to either AAA or AA. They're going to tear it up and they're going to get a... Most likely going to get called up uh, in the late summer months. Aside from those guys, Anthony Elford, Rowdy Tellez, Dwight Smith Jr., Richard Urena, uh, Lordy Scarell, who's an exciting prospect, Nick or sorry, Gift Negope, who's been a nice story, and Dalton Pompey should make up a formidable Buffalo team. Only thing really lacking here is the pitching depth. So, there you have it, your 2018 Toronto Blue Jays. That's my projected starting lineup. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, and let's go Jays!